You're watching FE Exam Prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE Exam. I get so many questions from listeners about the FE Exam's ethics questions. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what the FE Exam ethics questions cover and discuss the three major sections in the model rules that you might get tested on. This video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. The FE exam ethics portion is designed to assess the ethical understanding of candidates who are seeking to become licensed professional engineers. This exam is typically taken by individuals who have completed their engineering education and are looking to enter the professional engineering field. Passing the FE exam ethics portion is an important step in the process of becoming a licensed engineer and is intended to ensure that engineers have the knowledge and understanding necessary to act ethically in the field. The vision of NCWS, the organization that oversees the exam, is to provide leadership in professional licensure for engineers and surveyors through excellence in uniform laws, licensing standards, and professional ethics in order to safeguard the health, safety, and welfare of the public and to shape the future of professional licensure. Just like how there are ethical guidelines used by practitioners of medicine, science, finance, real estate, and law, an engineering professional is expected to obey these ethical codes in their respective practices. Modern codes for the practice of engineering place paramount priority on obligations to the public. There are several codes of ethics for engineers, and in this video, I will briefly summarize the code of ethics provided by the NCWS Model Rules Section 240.15 Rules of Professional Conduct. The code is provided on pages 4 and 5 in the FE Handbook 10.1. You can also access the code by using the link you see on the screen here, which we will also post in the description below. Summary of the NCWS Code of Ethics. The NCWS Code of Ethics addresses three major sections in the model rules. The order of importance is shown as listed with the most important priority being the safety and welfare of the public. Number one, licensee's obligation to the public. Number two, licensee's obligation to employers and clients. Number three, licensee's obligation to other licensees. Let's review these three sections in more detail. Number one, obligation to the public. Public welfare is most important. Designs must be safe. One must report when overruled judgment endangers public welfare or safety. Be honest in reporting and testimony. Do not guess or speculate when offering professional opinions. Do not take bribes for those opinions. Do not associate with dishonest organizations or persons. Must report any violations to the state board. Must cooperate with investigating bodies on matters of professional conduct. Now, a contractor or a owner may want to fast track a project as an example. So they might ask an engineer to lie and say that the project meets standards even though it doesn't, which would save the owner time and money, but put people's lives at risk. This is why ethics is so important in engineering. Number two, obligation to employer and clients. Only take assignments for which you, the engineer, has adequate qualifications and competence. Do not practice outside your expertise 
or approve unsupervised work, which can be very dangerous. May, as a project engineer, delegate work to other qualified licensed engineers, must respect confidential information, must not take kickbacks or be bribed, must disclose any potential conflicts of interest. That one's really important and sometimes tricky. No double dipping or obtaining an income from two different sources in an illicit way. No divided loyalties between public and private organizations. No inside lobbying. Number three, obligation to other licensees. Do not lie on your resume. Do not offer bribes. Do not purposely harm another engineer's reputation. And I've seen this happen many times. Do constructively point out errors in the work of another engineer when the public safety is at concern or risk. The FE exam strives to help you understand the code of ethics for engineers, which is one of the most important codes that we as engineers must adhere to. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and also run through more practice problems. Past the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments that I will read and respond to in future videos. So if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question you need answered, pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on pass the FE exam.